Well, Stephon Dix is worried about his role in the Buffalo Bills offense. So, Bloom, we're talking about value changes. Are you worried about Stephon Diggs' value changing? Yeah. Or should we be excited about it if they change his role? It's hard to see his value going up, right? I mean, you add uh, Dalton Kincaid. You add uh, Deontay Hardy. You have Khalil Shakir coming into his own. Hopes that Gabe Davis is going to stay healthy this year. James Cook is ready for a bigger role. The running game should be a bigger part of the offense with Damian Harris and Latavius Murray. I don't think they're going to get DeAndre Hopkins, but that they were even looking into it is worth noting. So, yeah, I understand why he's worried. I understand why the way he sees it, the peak of his earning potential is probably past, and it's time to wring whatever you can out of what's left in terms of the top value years. Again, DeAndre Hopkins is an example here where three years ago we lauded the Cardinals for trading for him on what seemed like a reasonable contract. Now nobody wants that contract. So I understand that uh, it's not quite as harsh as it is for running backs, but for any player who's past 26, 27, they know the clock's ticking. They know the clock's ticking and the clock's ticking in Buffalo. And that's the thing with Diggs when he stormed off when the Bengals beat him in the playoffs and then missing voluntary work, which is whatever, Bloom. And then the mandatory work, like he was there the first day, but he wasn't on the field when the reporters were out there. So everyone was talking in hushed tones. But Sean McDermott said, I think, quote, we're in a good place. I think, close quote. The hell does that mean? I don't know. You know, it's really funny. I don't know why I keep remembering the cease. They did something in the Minnesota Vikings locker room when he was with Minnesota where they went around to the players and they said, and maybe this is an out of bounds question to even put out there. It was, who do you not want to date your sister on the Vikings? And I think all but maybe one person, except for Stefan Diggs, said Stefan Diggs. So I'm not saying that has anything to do with this, but like like many of the other top receivers, he's his own dude. And he's going to listen to that beat that's in his head that's gotten him this far. He was a fifth round pick, right? So he's gone from a fifth round pick to the pinnacle. So he's going to listen to himself more than anything else. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because that's where that motivation and that drive comes from. But at the same time, it can get a little prickly when it comes to interpersonal relations. Yeah, we'll stick with the wide receiver position. We'll go to Detroit. Naman Ross St. Brown wants to be more of a deep threat this year. So value changes, Bloom. Yeah. How would that change with him? And with Detroit, of course, we still have to wait for the Jameis Williams suspension to be over to truly see what everyone together will look like, although we will get clues right. in the preseason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess this is almost like preemptive value change, negative value change not happening, right? Because... G, it's difficult. The all roads lead back to Amon Ross St. Brown is only getting targets because of the other options. But while that was bunk analysis coming out of his rookie year, when you look at this offense this year, you're adding Sam Laporta. Like you said, you're going to get 11 games of Jamison Williams if he stays healthy. You're adding Jameer Gibbs, who has a lot more dimensions as a pass catcher than DeAndre Swift did. Uh, you're, this offense should beat Marvin Jones, you know, this is a player who can capitalize in the red zone, capitalize on passes at the boundary. This pass offense in the second year under Ben Johnson should be even better. Now, with all these extra targets, you would think that Amon Ross St. Brown's targets, which are layups, right? Uh, simple, easy targets are replaced by maybe higher degree of difficulty targets, but with higher value when they connect, right? The deep shots to Jamison Williams, the seam shots to Sam Laporta, Jameer Gibbs getting him isolated on some poor linebacker that has to run down the field with him. But if Amon Ross St. Brown is getting more downfield looks, then maybe it can bounce out. If this is a more efficient offense, then maybe it can bounce out. And see, what I'm noticing is that Amon Ross St. Brown's still going early second at the latest, sometimes still in the first round. So the fantasy football community is not seeing a value change coming here. I don't know if it's because they contemplated that he his role could include more high-value downfield targets, or it's just you can trust him, you can trust this offense, you can trust him to have a role where 
maybe he's not going to win the league for you, but he's not going to lose the league if he's your first round pick or early second round pick. So I think this is a value change that you could anticipate, but people aren't buying it. And this could be part of the reason why. Could you be buying into Michael Pittman? Of course, Pittman not looking the same last year, revealing now, well, he had a hip issue. And you and I've talked about her on this show where Mm -hmm. poor Anthony Richardson, he's not getting to work with anybody because all these guys are still hurt during the offseason, including one Michael Pittman. So if we talk value change, training camp or preseason probably going to change the value of Michael Pittman. It'll go up. Yeah, it should. What we're going to be watching for, though, this is similar to what we're watching for in, say, Green Bay, what we're watching for in Houston, what we're watching for in Carolina. Who is the new quarterback going to favor? Who is going to be their guy? It might not be the one that is the most talented in our eyes or the one we're making the highest investment in in fantasy football leagues. That would certainly be Michael Pittman, who's the number one receiver. But there's Josh Downs, there's Alec Pierce, there's Jelani Woods. So this is yet to be seen, but I think this, like you said, Cease, this could keep that ADP down a little bit. Of course, we're going to be a little bit concerned about pass volume here and the fact that they do have so many viable targets could be an issue for Michael Pittman where, say, Drake London in a not very inspiring pass offense was still pretty solid as a rookie last year because he didn't have a lot of competition for targets. Kyle Pitts got hurt, et cetera. Uh, I think there's a lot to balance here with Michael Pittman. But looking in the range of the draft he's in, if Anthony Richardson's ready, he'll probably be a hit. He'll be ready and he'll be a hit, a hit for the Rams, I guess. Why do I always get hesitant when I am writing about the Rams or Matthew Stafford's praising Van Jefferson? This has been uh, the Puka Nakua stuff, I believe. Yeah. The other stuff, you know, I'm a little difficult to warm up to Van Jefferson, but yet another positive news story coming out this week on our footballguys.com newswire. Check out our free daily newsletter. You sign up for it at footballguys.com. It's free every day. It takes written by me, Sigmund Bloom, Joe Bryant, hot and fresh to your inbox. You've got a life. We don't it's football guys daily newsletter. So yesterday I was writing about Van Jefferson and I had to throw in Puka Nakua. Cause that's the guy I believe the hype with Van Jefferson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stafford likes him. He's warming up to him. They're working out together. Like, okay, off-season fluff or no? Probably fluff. This is one of those situations, like, what, what's next? Tutu Atwell. You know, they spend second-round picks on these guys, and they right. don't return second-round pick value, right? And what this? I suppose they're, you're, you're great. You're looking ahead. Allen Robinson's not going to be with the team forever. little premature breakup, but uh, Cooper Cup maybe is the cornerstone. Uh, but you know, these one-year rentals like Odell Beckham. So you're planning ahead, but the original word cease was what? Van Jefferson's going to learn inside, outside. He's going to be able to play all the th- positions in the offense. He's had some trouble staying healthy. There have been flashes, but I agree with you that if you're going to throw a late-round pick at a Rams receiver, I think it's Nakua. And part of the reason is because I think Nakua is the one who's going to get those short targets, kind of like Amon Ross St. Brown. Can't we see him being the Amon Ross St. Brown of this offense? That makes yes. a lot of sense to me in terms of roles and a limited pass offense, a limited offensive line. Well, those are the kinds of guys you have to rely on. Uh, So, and I think it does make sense this time of year, Cease, we're thinking about offense level takes and, oh, you know, when you're on the clock at one for three or one, four, and you're looking at Cooper cup, like, man, that's Cooper. But the Rams now, if it's the 17th round and we're talking about Nakua or Jefferson, I think that's more palatable. I still think I agree with you, Cease. It's Nakua. That's almost a taste test, right? And Matthew Stafford, you're like, ugh. (laughs) Yeah. I've drank this before. I don't like it. No, no. Yeah, it's gone sour. It's it's past the expiration date. (laughs) Literally. uh, We will skip more wide receiver news since we're wide receiver heavy today, but I do want to bring up the topic of Justin Fields showing more command at the line of scrimmage. Now, we've heard a few things from the Bears camp uh, this offseason. And one of those is like, we don't want him to be robotic. Okay, that's fine. But now the latest is they want him to take command at the line of scrimmage. They want him to look at that first read before he thinks to run. They're almost just telling us what he does, but we already know what he does, Bloom, because we watched him. And it's like Justin Fields is thinking about running almost as soon as he takes a snap. So there's a lot of people out there. And listen. The physical talent is so easy to see. It makes me mad. It's almost like talking about Craig Dulcich, where it draws it draws my ire bloom, where it's like mm-hmm. uh, Justin Fields is really talented. Yeah, no, 
kidding. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Joe. Um, the natural physical talent is so easy to see with Justin Fields, but as a passer, I am not counting on a Jalen Hurts like leave exactly in 2023 from Justin Fields. And the fact that they're telling us they want him to command the line, they want him to read the defense before he runs. Okay, they're they're telling us exactly what he needs to work on. Bloom, we need the preseason. And I, for me personally, even a couple games in the regular season uh, before I start thinking, look at him developing as a passer. I got to see it before I believe it. I agree with that 100%. And I think you bringing up Jalen Hurts is exactly right here. Are we going to have, see, so we're going to have with Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen, uh, two unicorns that everybody chases, just like Patrick Mahomes now, where in the case of Patrick Mahomes, it was, oh, you can't break that wild stallion. Where well, you're not supposed to break him. You're supposed to just let him run and run right let him let him run free with josh allen it was can we iron out these accuracy issues on high percentage throws and we're going to watch anthony richardson with that one and with jalen hurts i guess it's the processor and it's becoming a natural passer it's becoming a quarterback whose mindset is first we attack as a passer even though it might be easier to attack as a runner whenever the bullets are flying and I agree with you that the fact that the Bears are saying we want him to do these things means he's not doing them or he wasn't doing them, <laughs> right. right? That it right. didn't come naturally. And unlike Hertz, he's entering his third year, but it's only a second year under Luke Getze, who's still also an unknown. You know, what do we hang our hat on? We say, well, Luke Getze, Shane Steichen with Richardson, we can look at what he did with Hertz, right? So right. I, I agree that there's reason for skepticism here. That being said, Justin Fields is fifth, sixth round pick. We know his running ability can win your week. And we know that he's got DJ Moore. He's got Chase Claypool, who's going to be more acclimated to the offense. So if the, if it does even improve, not a Jalen Hurts-like improvement, but let's just say an incremental improvement as a passer, where he makes two or three more plays a game as a passer, it may not be a big bottom line lift for him because, let's face it, we kind of want him taking off as a runner for fantasy. But for DJ Moore for this offense in general, maybe also cease from our projecting run pass splits because this was a severe run heavy offense. So these are some things we're going to need to be watching, but cease you're right. As long as they keep talking about it in aspirational terms, we want him to do these things. We're working on these things. That means it ain't happening yet. Yeah. Uh, is Carson Wentz the ultimate like candy man, right? Where he just shows <laughs> up and scares you. Because now the news is Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be ready for training camp. Like this offseason has been like, I don't know if he's going to be ready. They might actually cut him. And then last week, the reports are they could consider Carson Wentz. All of a sudden, Jimmy G's like, I'm ready. Okay, (laughs) I guess Uh, the Raiders situation, obviously one to watch. And well, we talked about Stephon Diggs frustration. I'm waiting to see where Devontae Adams frustration level is at. Yeah. I think that this is one of those cases in terms of value changes. Maybe we don't get ahead of ourselves backing away from Devontae Adams, although that's going to be something to watch, that relationship. We don't get ahead of ourselves backing away from Josh Jacobs. Although again, there's some stuff to work out there because we're thinking, is this going to be a Brian Hoyer offense? This is going to be a Carson Wentz offense. Maybe it'll still be a Jimmy Garoppolo offense, which should help because Garoppolo is fully versed in Josh McDaniel's ease, just like Jared Siddham was last year. And he activated some things, at least from a fantasy perspective, that Derek Carr wasn't. So I think this is good news for the Raiders for fantasy. But see, it's the Raiders. So all roads lead back to tears and failure. And hey, Las Vegas, you got your championship. You got your championship. Congrats there. Um, there yeah. you go. There's our, that concludes our hockey talk, Bloom. I was actually there for a watch party, though. I want the record to show oh, I was at an official okay. Golden Knights yes. watch party in Las yeah. Vegas at Circa. So there you go. It's a, a, a title parade down the strip. I mean, that's something we haven't seen something like that before. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we haven't seen something like, well, I guess we have seen something like said, a salary adjustment for Joe Mixon as we go through mm. the day's news bloom. Um, why, have, why have they been waiting so long? Are they can do something with Joe Burrow first. Because now the athletic, right. I think it was Paul Denner that comes out. Paul he's Denner, like, there's yeah. there's going to be a salary adjustment for Joe Mixon. And I was like, yeah, it's June. <laughs> we knew this in, well, after the draft. And I know there are some, right. certainly dynasty GMs that are like, just get Chase Brown out there. Okay, that's fine. Value changes to be sure. What's this team look like without Joe Mixon? Because if Mixon 
refuses a pay cut, then they will cut him. Um, and then it will right. be the Chase Brown show or they'll go get right. Kareem Hunt or whoever. Right. There's this group of veteran running backs. We're kind of waiting on them signing. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, Bloom, the Joe Mixon thing, it's like, it's a little old for me. Yeah, it, it, this is one where Joe Mixon, was, unlike Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon wasn't released. Joe Mixon wasn't traded for a bag of peanuts. He's still on the team. And I think the fantasy community, when you look at the ADP, his ADP started to creep back up in these best ball drafts. And everyone exhaled and said, well, I guess it's going to be Joe Mixon. Eh, let's wait and see. Uh, $12.8 million, I think, $10 million in cash. Daner specifically mentions those numbers that they have to come down to be more in line with the current running back market. And he also mentions that pool of veteran running backs that they can turn to if Mixon won't take that. But you, you nailed it, Cease. He also projects that hey the borough extension is something that they're working on it's something that can happen and if that happens then look for the mix and situation to get worked out and that makes it easier for them to find some middle ground so i would still say it's 80 90 95 percent mixing is the starter come week one and if you've taken them in the third round you're not feeling like you just shot yourself in the foot but it's not a hundred percent and i feel like people have moved on as if it is yeah, and I feel like people again, Dynasty Jam's like, just get Chase Brown. Like, I uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Like Brown and Dynasty will watch. We'll watch his career with great interest, but gotta see it and we'll see what the Bengals look like with or without Joe Mixon, most likely uh with a couple of running back stories to tie a bow on today's program, Bloom. Running back stories that get me super, super excited. I'll save my mm-hmm. favorite for the last, but let's talk mm-hmm. about Raheem Blackshear. Now working for a larger role with the Panthers offense, problem is Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders are ahead of him on the depth chart, but uh, he has been taking on a larger role. Yeah. So this is the first, uh, I, I guess, note for Raheem Blackshear this offseason. But it's interesting that during mandatory minicamp, it was Raheem Blackshear that was doing more. Um, and, you know, it was something of note to the Charlotte Observer. And I think we need to pay more attention to these notes out of Charlotte, out of Panthers Nation, because it's a new coach. So a player that was overlooked, see, especially when it's players that we think there's more there than what they're getting out of this player. And Rakeem Blackshear, anytime he's been on the field, he looks like a a good functional player. I mean, you know, not necessarily you can build your backfield around him, but when you look about, you think about his strengths, I think that there's not as much of an overlap with Miles Sanders and Chuba Hubbard. You know, we're going to watch. I know one of the other things we'll watch is Chuba Hubbard going to be the goal line back, uh, as Miles Sanders not necessarily the guy you want as the goal line back. But I think you could see Raheem Blackshear as your space back, and you could see him as a passing down back. And let's face it, Miles Sanders isn't exactly known for inspiring trust, whether it's injuries, fumbles. He's not exactly known for locking up a backfield. So I think that we have to be paying attention to all these names. And it's another reminder that this is where you can get an edge because, man, it's hard to get an information edge. It's not so much the immediate information like Dalvin Cook was released. Who's he going to sign for? Uh, What's he going to sign for with who? DeAndre Hopkins. It's knowing that, hey, come week two, Miles Sanders goes down. Then you should remember the name, not just Chuba Hubbard, but Raheem Blackshear. Yeah, and what you could see, Bloom, and we've seen this before, um, Blackshear could be the number three on the depth chart, and if Miles Sanders gets hurt or fumbles or whatever, then he's taking most of the one A touches. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah, Chuba Hubbard, absolutely. Chuba Hubbard's role could stay the same, and it could exactly. be Blackshear that like leapfrogs him, even though he's right. officially number three. And you know yeah, how I love remember. those hokey running backs. We've been doing shows long oh, enough. Yeah. It was TD Lee. I think we were talking about yeah. Lee Suggs on this show. Lee Probably. Suggs, yeah. Yeah, we spent a lot of time talking about David Wilson. Lots of guys. Um, I think those guys remember. Oh, man, Kevin Jones. <sighs> is a, let's walk, take a walk. It's a, it's a great little part of the country, too, Blacksburg, up there in the Appalachians. Look, the other thing I'm going to remember, who was Bryce Young's leading receiver last year? Who caught the most balls for Alabama last year? Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs. So, yeah. He remember Bryce Young has that uh, processor, and he's going to make the best choice out there. He's going to be thinking very calmly, and if it's the wide receiver, it's the running back, it's the tight end. He's going to find that guy. So yeah, Raheem Blackshear, put a little reminder, a little note, pay attention to him. 
You're watching the Audible here on YouTube. It's our Football Guys channel. Make sure you help us out and like, comment, share, subscribe. Smash the freaking like button. And, of course, hit the notification bell so that you never miss a vid. Uh, but, Bloom, uh, audio-wise, we will be releasing yeah. a preseason watch list. It's 32 teams, yes. 32 episodes, and every skill position player that you need to know about. It's our annual tradition. I'm going to tease a little bit of that in our final story of today's program because Kenny Wangwu with Minnesota is getting first team reps. Alexander Madison may not be as good as y'all think. Now there were times, especially early in his career where Madison looked like Dalvin cook. And I've said it on this show. I would like rub my eyes. I was like, that was that cook or Madison. Um, if we talk about analytics, we know there's a lot of advanced data people that look at Alexander Madison and say, uh, uh-uh, uh, 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 I don't have, it doesn't have it. Because it's not as simple as next man up, especially when you have Ty Chandler, who I love, Kenny Wangwu, who I love, there with Madison. And you've already got Wangwu getting first team reps during mandatory minicamp, by the way. So the Vikings backfield, it's going to be interesting to watch. But I don't think it's as simple as, well, Alexander Madison's been the guy behind Dalma Cook, and now he's going to be the guy when that guy's going to get pushed by other talented players, Wangwu. And Ty Chandler, to be specific. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Dwayne McBride. So the fantasy football community see, seems to agree with you. Uh, I've been doing these live streams on our YouTube channel on Friday nights with Greg Ambrosius and Tom Kesnick. Remember, Football Guys Championship. It's underway, folks. 350, two flexes, no kicker, six-point pass touchdowns. And let me tell you, you watch one of these live streams, and you're going to think, I can take advantage of that. One of those things may be, Cease. Alexander Madison is still going after Dalvin Cook. After Dalvin Cook. He's going in the seventh round. Seventh round. Now, if you believe that oh, it's just as easy as the changing of the guard, three and a half million a year, that's pretty much starter money at this point at the running back position. Then you can jump in and get Alexander Madison in the sixth round. I think in best ball drafts, underdog, you might have to spend a six round pick because that makes risk reward picks a little more attractive. But you have a potential starting running back who's proven. But like you said, Cease, the other side of this is we're going to be watching. Now, Kevin O'Connell, this is year two in Kevin O'Connell's offense. And what did we see? Uh, Ty Chandler, you know, a little more of a, a stress on speed and quickness at running back. Maybe we're going to see more outside zone. Maybe we're going to see more stretch plays where that speed and quickness is more important than that downhill, rugged, uh, urgency that we see from Madison. So I think that we have to watch this because while it's the second year for this coach in this offense, their personnel moves have hinted that maybe they have a different model for the running back that they're looking for. And then at the same time, Hey, if Madison's not up to it and he's, I don't remember what Madison's numbers were in terms of carries at Boise state, but anytime a running back, we can even apply this to Tony Pollard. Anytime a running back hasn't held up, proven he can hold up for, say, 220, 250 carries every week, getting 15, 18 carries a game, then we have to wait until we see it to truly believe it. it means we need to know who's behind them. And while Ty Chandler was the pick last year, Wang Wu, remember Wang Wu, also a great story, comeback story from an Achilles tear. He's the speed back, and he looks like he's ready to take a big role. Mm. It is the audible footballguys.com. It's our YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching. We've got a bunch of great shows here uh, Monday through Friday for you right here on our Football Guys channel on YouTube. He's Sigma Bloom. You follow him on Twitter at Sigma Bloom. I am at Cecil Lammy. The show is at The Audible. We appreciate you all. Check out that Football Guys free daily newsletter. And as always, be safe, be kind, know that you are appreciated. Stay tuned. And would you please stay frosty? 